first lock to the tweezers, we send a bright laser beam through the back of a microscope objective. And when it comes out, it's very tightly focused laser beam uh, that forms a three-dimensional gradient force trap. And we trap a droplet in air in that laser beam. So we're levitating a droplet in air, in light. And the great thing about the optical tweezers is if the droplet were to drift to one side or the other, it'll be pushed back by the laser beam. So it's a restoring trap, and that allows us to trap droplets for hours or days if we want. When the droplet is trapped in the laser beam in the optical tweezers, that same laser beam also induces a vibrational spectrum of the droplet. It's called a Raman spectrum. And so we collect the Raman scattered photons, the light, from the droplet through the same microscope objective we use to form the trap. So we're measuring the Raman spectrum every second of the droplet, and that allows us to probe how the droplet's size and composition and other properties are changing. And we use this experiment to simulate the evolution of real particles in the atmosphere. Secondary organic aerosol is a really important component of particles in the atmosphere, particulate matter. Particulate matter uh, is toxic, and so we're concerned with understanding how particulate matter forms so we can prevent or reduce its production. Particles in the atmosphere also play really important roles in modulating climate. They can reflect incoming solar radiation or absorb it depending on what they're made out of. Uh, particles are also what create clouds. So every cloud droplet or ice crystal in the atmosphere are nucleated on uh, an original particle seed, but the ability of particles to make clouds and change the properties of clouds and climate depends on what those particles are made out of. So secondary organic aerosol is a major component of particles in the atmosphere. It forms in the gas phase through reactions of organic vapors, volatile organic compounds, usually with oxidants. So what we've done in the optical tweezers is we have simulated this reaction directly in the trapping chamber, which hasn't been done before. We um, float in alpha pinene vapor, which is emitted by trees. Alpha pinene has a double bond that's very juicy to being attacked by ozone. So we then float ozone into the chamber, let the alpha pinene and ozone mix. The alpha pinene becomes oxidized and starts condensing onto the droplet that we already have trapped in the laser beam, but also brand new particles from alpha pinene oxidation nucleate and grow. And those start to coagulate and add to the particle that is tweezed in the laser beam. And we can watch all of this occur uh, in real time. So once we add the secondary organic aerosol using a very realistic atmospheric chemical reaction, now we can start to probe the properties of secondary organic aerosol. And this is why we're doing this experiment, creating genuine secondary organic aerosol in the optical tweezers experiment because there are a lot of key properties of this secondary organic aerosol that are not very well understood, which means we don't understand how this material that is ubiquitous in the atmosphere is really affecting atmospheric chemistry, clouds, and climate change. And the optical tweezers provides us with a unique ability to probe many of these important properties in a direct manner. And we are using this new information to improve our understanding of the reactivity of particles in the atmosphere, how they change the chemistry of the atmosphere, how they nucleate clouds and ice crystals, change the properties of clouds, and play a key but uncertain role in changing the planet's climate.